Hello everyone, my name is Peyton. Um, I'm going to give a overview of the parts of our product that uh, relate to the CI space. And then I'm going to give a quick overview as well of kind of the code that relates and how we do things on the front end for CI specifically. All right, so right now I'm locally on our GDK project, which is what allows us to develop um, against the GitLab project. I'm going to look into a current project. Um, so really how CI really works is we have a file in our repo, gitlab-ci.yaml, and within that file is where you would set up um, different stages, different jobs um, to create a pipeline to make continuous integration work. So when you have a lot of different engineers pushing up to your code base at the same time, um, this ensures that we don't introduce any bugs into a code base. And that's uh, one of the great things about continuous integration. Um, let's start out in settings, CI, CD. Um, so we have some settings that you can apply to uh, your pipelines, such as pipeline subscriptions, triggers, variables, general pipelines, environments, runners, different things like that. Um, we won't cover every single um, feature within settings, but uh, let's look at uh, CI CD variables for now. Um, so this is built in view. And uh, what it allows you to do is create uh, variables uh, or file types, and you can also run them in different environments. Um, and these variables run within your pipeline, um, so you can set them up via the UI. Uh, so you could just create, uh, uh, let's say, Goku DBZ. You can create a variable like that. Um, Obviously, that isn't a variable you would really create. Maybe you will, but um, now this vari variable can run in your pipeline uh, or you can scope it to a certain uh, uh, environment. Okay, so that's uh, one of the different parts of our code base that we touch. Um, if we go to CI, CD, you'll notice that we have um, a pipelines list here. This is all uh, pipelines that have been currently run for uh, this repo, and there's different ways that you can trigger pipelines. You can trigger them, like by user can trigger a pipeline by pushing up to the repo. You can use the API to trigger a pipeline. There's uh, different ways that you can trigger pipelines. Um, within this list, this is actually built in view as well, um, and we have tabs for filtering by scope, and we also have uh, a filter bar so you can filter by uh, a certain author and maybe a certain branch, and that will filter out the uh, pipeline so you can kind of drill down and find a certain pipeline, especially uh, very helpful um, in a large organization. Um, so we kind of have the status uh, of a pipeline, which would be uh, a few different states. Um, you can kind of see those states here. Uh, if you cancel a pipeline, if your pipeline fails for some reason, if you have a certain test set up for your pipeline and the code you pushed up failed, uh, pipelines that are in progress. Um, we have the pipeline ID and we have these badges to kind of give you a little bit more detail based on that pipeline. The trigger source, um, some commit information, and the different stages that are like set up uh, for your pipeline. Time ago, um, so it kind of gives you some data on that, and then like some manual actions like to retry the pipeline or um, stop the pipeline. Um, paginations on this as well. Um, you can filter by scope as well up here. Uh, let's see here, uh, run pipeline will take you to a different view, which you can run a manual pipeline for a branch or tag from this and also put in uh, variables maybe to run for this. Um, let's see, 
Uh, we also have a pipeline detail view. So if you come to your pipelines list and hit a uh, certain pipeline, we have a visualization here to allow you to visualize um, how your pipeline is running. Um, the, this, this supports like a, a hybrid uh, view. So this is a stage base slash DAG. Um, but we also have a DAG visualization that's uh, just made into the product, this milestone. Um, you can get a little bit more granular on the jobs um, that consist of your pipeline and um, different data based on the jobs. If you want to see what's going on with the job, you can come and click and see how, why your job passed or why it um, failed and uh, some more details over here um, as well in the sidebar. All right, so that's kind of like the bulk of the product. Um, of course, we have you know some more details um, in settings and in admin area. There's also some details around CI CD um, if you're running a, a self-hosted instance as well. Like we have the instance variable UI, um, <clears throat> pretty much the exact same as a project. Uh, uh, settings for the CI CD and as well as group. This is pretty much shared code that allows you to manage variables for that um, certain project, uh, some different settings and different things you can do here. Like you can <clears throat> set your variables to be in the admin instance protected by default. That'll uh, run over every single prod product, uh, I mean project, um, that'll protect all those variables by default. Um, and also, like if you have a different merge request or uh, something like that, like you'll have a merge request widget that'll show you some details based on that. Um, just like based on a commit, it'll show you your pipeline, your recent pipeline. Um, so different things like that. So that's kind of like a quick product overview of some, maybe like some of the uh, bulk parts of the project that we do. Um, there's definitely a lot more, of course. Um, so let's go ahead. Let me uh, let me bring over my code editor. Um, let's kind of take a look at some of the different pieces um, of the puzzle. Um, so right now I have pulled down um, our GitLab project. So this is our code base for the app. Um, you'll notice under app there is an I've got a lot open. Sorry, uh, there is a assets folder. Within assets, we have a JavaScript folder. Um, so let's take a look at, say, um, for instance, the bit of the code that relates to settings, CI, CD um, variables. So how you manage variables um, in the UI. So under app assets CI variable list, we have uh, all the code related for that. Um, within this, it's pretty simple. Um, we use Bootstrap uh, kind of for our UI, but we've we've taken over Bootstrap and GitLab UI. So that's kind of like our design system slash component library. Uh, well, GitLab UI is our component library, and then we have Pajamas, which is our um, design system. So if we take a look at a component within here, um, you can see we're importing different components from GitLab UI to use to build upon this. And within this uh, component, uh, we have a good bit of code, uh, like such as the modal that pops up when you click um, add variable and different, different ways of validating this information. Um, and uh, making sure that we're adding variables and editing variables and they're going into the right columns in the database. Um, this certain feature actually uses Vuex for state management. So you can kind of come into like the store. Um, you'll see this pattern a lot throughout the code base and uh, kind of get an idea of what this state pattern kind of looks like. Um, and when we send the different variables up, um, we have actions such as add variable, which will hit an endpoint, uh, dispatch some actions based on 
how the endpoint handled uh, the payload we sent up. And uh, update variable, edit, request, fetch environments is just pretty much uh, just a lot of different components built on top of each other to make that feature. And let's take a look at another piece of the code base. Um, let's say, okay, so pipelines list. All right, so for this certain feature, we um, go under app assets. Let's go down to pipelines. Here we go. And um, this should be merged soon, but as the recording of this video, I've kind of grouped um, everything that's related to pipelines list in its own folder. It was kind of rogue, so hopefully that'll get merged soon. Um, and you'll be seeing this, but if not, it is just all of these components are just uh, nested under the components directory. Um, but so pipelines list, um, the root component that deals with all of this is this pipelines.view and everything else is kind of a child component in the tree. Um, and this pretty much, the bulk of this feature is pretty much a table with some rows and um, all of these different components in this build on top of the feature that you see right here. Uh, and one of the main things to note um, is this is uh, pipelines are all, you know, they stay in a running state. So if a new pipeline comes up, um, we show that dynamically and we do that by pulling the API continuously. So uh, when any new data comes in, like a pipeline triggered, you know, we're constantly pulling the API to grab that new pipeline, that data and render it in that view. So as you can see, the pipelines uh, dot view um, has different components within here like navigation controls, uh, pipeline filtered search, which is what allows you to filter the pipelines at the top of the uh, view. Uh, and this actually uses a very um, maybe non-conventional as of right now uh, way to store state, which is um, kind of like a homegrown um, store, which is pretty much just the ES6 class that we're using to do data. Um, this, most of our code base will eventually be moved over to GraphQL. Um, this is one of the, one of the candidates to do that. And we have certain services such as get pipelines that kind of continuously get pipelines when polling set up and, and we have to deal with pagination here and different things so such as CI pagination API mix in this bit of code here has a few methods like on change tab on change page update internal state that kind of deals with polling and updates the query parameters uh, for this certain feature so that would be like if you on change tab here um, we don't have any on change pages here because we don't have enough pipelines but under this test project, we can check that out. So let's go over CICD pipelines. And like this would be an on change page. You'll notice up here in the query params in the top of the URL bar, page two kind of comes up. If you check the console, um, you'll see the query params are updated. And if we wait a few seconds, you'll notice that uh, this network request, request will happen again. So obviously we have polling set up here um, to get that data. Okay, so that's pretty good overview, I'd say, of the pipelines uh, list. If you come to a pipeline detail page um, where you visualize the pipeline, uh, all of this code actually is not using any type of visualization library at the moment. It's just pure CSS um, that may change in the future to kind of make it a little bit more reliable. Uh, that's all under um, pipelines. Uh, so same thing, app assets, JavaScript, <clears throat> pipelines, components, graph. Um, so you can kind of see like the graph component, I believe is the top level component. Um, and we have 
more child components such as link pipelines, uh, the different stages within the pipelines uh, that all broke down. Um, and a note to make about this link pipeline, um, kind of how this works is, uh, for instance, we have a downstream pipeline here. Um, this would be a link pipeline because this would be a multi-project pipeline. So if you have like a microservices architecture, if you uh, have the trigger keyword and you want to trigger uh, another pipeline within a different repo, um, you can set up your YAML file to do that and it'll trigger a link pipeline. And kind of the way the UX works right now is you click on that downstream and you can see the, the pipeline that uh, a certain job triggered here. Um, if you don't know what that means, uh, you can kind of come in here and click that and see, okay, we have a trigger job here that's named trigger job, but the way you know is you have the trigger keyword and it triggers, whenever this job runs, it triggers uh, another pipeline that exists within, within uh, another repo. Um, so that's kind of what that means. Um, we have some more different things for jo uh, jobs that'll kind of show you a little bit more um, data uh, on your jobs. I don't believe we have this in view yet. Let's do command J, command option J and C. Yeah, this is still in still in Haml and we use a lot of Haml still um, for some data that we don't need reactivity or, or some parts of the UI where we don't need reactivity. Uh, the view handles really well. Um, we won't get into too much details with the jobs because I haven't uh, personally worked much in this part of the code base yet, but uh, it kind of takes you to the same uh, bit of the UI if you were to come to a certain pipeline in a pipelines list and hit a job, you know, kind of give you a little bit of information on why your job failed, uh, some actions to retry your job within the UI where we just pretty much like any front end send uh, requests up to the back end and then they do some magic on retrying jobs uh, in a runner. Um, let's see here. Hopefully that's a pretty good overview. Um, I maybe can do a follow-up video, maybe a part two or something like that if uh, I miss anything uh, that would like to be went over. Um, main bit of my knowledge comes from those parts of the code base because uh, I've written features for them and done different things like that. Um, just another quick overview uh, is, for instance, let's go to GitLab Sites, GitLab UI. Um, so this is a bookmark I had for our design system. So, or uh, excuse me, our component library. So you can kind of come in here and see the different components we use throughout the product, um, ways to import them, different props uh, for their API on how to use them. And uh, that's very helpful to build something and this is our design system so you can come in here and check out some more data uh, on the way we uh, use um, or the way we follow a design system at GitLab for our product to keep it uniform uh, so those are two helpful um, little links and of course we have very good docs um, around our product. So this is a really good one, GitLab CI YAML reference to kind of get you started with um, how to configure a pipeline within our code base. So that's just like a quick overview from uh, me on uh, a little bit of our product and our code base. Um, and uh, we work hand in hand with back end, of course, on just pretty much making API requests to uh, either the public API sometimes or the internal API. And uh, that's good. Oh, another thing I would like to show is that's not um, necessarily uh, common in a lot of different code bases. Um, but so if we go to app, 
views, and let's just say we go to, uh, let's go to the CI variables, um, different view. A lot of the times we pass data through um, Hamlin Rails. So like we have this uh, variable right here, save endpoint. And if you notice right here, we have an ID. All this ID is, is we have lots of different view apps that are injected into our code base. So this ID right here is where we're using view to find this element on the page and inject a view app within that. And we pass data down through a data set. And then we grab that data set like within the code. Um, so if you notice here, we're passing a lot of data to this one element that you know essentially looks like it does nothing. But if you come to, uh, let's see, where is this one even at? Might take me a second. Let's see. Um, bum, 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 bum. Pages, projects, maybe under settings, CICD index. Yeah, this would be where, yep, yep, okay. So this would, where, would be where we would initialize um, the app. So if we do let's, CI variable list, um, and we have this index page here. So as you can see, we are getting uh, that ID and we are getting all of that data in Hamel off of the data set. And then at that point, we are uh, creating a new um, view app, CI variable settings where we pass in all that data. So that'll kind of let you know like the top level element um, of an app or a view app. Okay, hopefully that wasn't too bad. Hopefully that helped um, and uh, Thanks for hanging around and watching. See you later.